let's talk about window layout. Specifically, the rear of a van where you're going to have a bunk window or awning style window like this. And this is how to even get started. So where do you place the window? Why should you place it there? Things to consider. So what we have with us is a AVC rig window pill. That's the name of this foam outer ring. And it's not a sponsored video, but just wanted to talk about a couple of good products that you guys may use in your build. And I think this is really good. This is the first time I've used it. So a couple of steps that I'm taking, I'm doing a little bit slower just to make sure that I got my steps laid out and defined before I go to the other side of the van. So that's another thing to get, that's really good to do when you're uh, working on a van is don't rush this. Spend a lot of time on one side, especially if it's your first, then you can speed it up on the second side. Now, one thing that's speeding this up for me is I have this cardboard template. I've cut out a number of these windows. So my template for the CRL awning style window is pretty set. It's a perfect size template. If I trace this and cut it out with the jigsaw, it'd be perfect every time. So that is a little cheat that I have in here. You can make your own. I have a video on the channel um, where I show you how to make that. But for now, we're going to assume that you already made this template for the whole cutout. This video is mainly going over where you put the window and why you should consider other parts of the van in locating the window. So the ABC rig part right here is the window pill. This is helping us step out from the van and bring us out to our wall. So our wall panel is right here. So when our wall panel comes down, it's going to come flush. We'll have a cutout and then the wall panel will come back down and it gives us a nice clean place. The foam is going to be uh, glued together and then upholstered. So it's got a nice, essentially the foam is to have an upholster base. Um, this is very rigid foam. Uh, it's light, but you could also do it out of wood if you wanted to, wanted to. Uh, it's going to be pretty heavy, but you can do it out of wood. Uh, what ABC rig has done is I have this end backwards. There is a piece of underlayment that is glued to the rim of this so that when I put my wall panel on, I can screw it into this wood that's glued to the foam. Uh, this foam you're seeing now is actually the inner spacer. So it's light, but once we wrap it, glue it, and then screw it to the panel, we'll be good to go. This is not meant to be structural in any way. It's really just a way to transition from the wall opening to the frame, the wood outside of the wood panel and all the screws are going to be the structure. It will rest on the inner frame. So we're gonna, we're gonna take this apart like a sandwich and then we'll show you the inner frame and how we did that. So that's what you're looking at. Now for height, the first thing you wanna do when you're looking at this is consider your height. Now, the first thing that comes through my mind is what are my, what are my limits? So what are my, What's my, my tolerances to work in between? And my first one is this cutout opening. So up here on the top, I have an opening. So after I go and I take a jigsaw and I cut out my, these support members, I cut this out so I have a nice flush place to work with. I have to cut this out anyway because uh, you have to remove it to, to cut the window out. You need to cut this off first. Um, because this is extremely difficult to jigsaw through. So you're going to need to take a handheld grinder with a cutoff wheel and cut this. It will be a pain in the butt to jigsaw it off. Trust me. So after you cut that out, what you're going to do is there is a, a line that we drew. And that clean line is as far up that this window frame, not the window frame, but this window... Uh, transition piece, this window pill can go up. So you pushed it all the way up. And then what I did is I took an aluminum spacer and it gave me an eighth of, eighth of an inch of wiggle room. The eighth of an inch of wiggle room is just uh, for some wiggle room, but also so that when I uh, put my fabric on here, any additional thickness that the fabric adds won't mess me up when I'm putting this back in and I have maybe, you know, I don't have enough room to, to move it because once we cut our window out, that's it. We can't adjust it at all. 
So what I do is I put the foam on and then I put this up here and I bump it up against there. We're gonna take this apart. I'll, I will show you that part. Um, but this is just to get a concept of where to start. So I have my spacer. They give me some wiggle room. I have my foam. And so I start from that limit and I come down because that's as high as I can go. I can't go any higher with a window. So that's where the window is going to be. The next thing I want to do is take my tape measure and I just want to double check that if I'm going to store bikes or anything like that underneath here, um, we're about to find out what this is going to look like measurement wise and what we have to work with. Now this is just a rough measurement um, because I don't have the floor in, all that good stuff. So this is just a rough measurement. But right here, the bottom of the window, I've got 43. And let's see if I actually, let's just say 43 inches. Yeah, 43 inches. I got this wheel well in my, in my way, so it's kind of hard to, uh, yeah. So 43 inches. Let's just write that on the van. Let's do 43 inches. And that is my height. So we got 43. And again, this is not the final number. I'm just doing this to show you the relationship between the floor and the other material. Um, so let's just assume, just assuming for uh, simplistic purposes, 43 inches is from the bottom of this frame down. So actually, I'm going to do this. I'm about to tell you what you can expect for bed height and thickness. So we're actually going to jump this up. See if we can get a little bit closer on, closer on our measurements. So let's call this um, let's call it, let's do four let's do forty four inches. So let's change this to forty four. So forty four inches from the top right here to the top of this foam to the bottom of the floor. Now, we're doing that because we want to see, one, we want to put fit bikes under here. So a minimum for bikes is 36 inches. Uh, let's do 36 inch bike, bikes. If you can do more, that's good. But let's just start with 36 right now. So now we have 36 is our floor up. And we want to start, so we want to start segmenting all this. So let's I guess we get an example. Let's see here. So here is the window frame that we're working with is right here. And then from there to the bottom of the floor is 44 inches. Okay. From the bottom of the floor up, Let's just say to here, this dotted line, that's going to be our 36 inch mark. So this part right here is what we have a question. What, how, what room right here do we have? We, it's important to find out what that room is because that's your bed. That's your bed mattress, uh, the frame, how you're supporting the bed. All of that is in this one section here. So if we have... Um, if we start to take this apart, let's see how much we have to work with. So we should have, let's see, eight, it should be eight inches. So 36, so eight inches. So we're looking at eight inches and we're probably gonna go with a six inch mattress. So you have eight and then you minus six inches for the mattress. Okay, and that leaves you two, two inches. The two inches is for the frame. Okay, 
So the two inches is for the frame. And so we're probably gonna, because that is our frame, we're probably going to use um, inch and a half square tubing and a half inch sheet ply, plywood. <laughs> Okay, so you do see how see how the sandwich just got created. So we have enough room for bikes. We have enough room for a uh, our frame right here. So we have an inch and a half for our square tubing. That's gonna go here. Then we have a half inch that is our plywood that's gonna go and that's gonna support the bed. And then we have our six inch memory foam mattress or whatever. Now we do that so that once all these layers add up, we are ending up here at, uh, we're ending up here where the mattress will be. Now, that is assuming that our floor, 44 inches, is down to our floor. So in all actuality, there's gonna be an inch and a half subtracted from that. So we need to take that inch and a half from somewhere and we have the 36 or we have the frame or we have the mattress. So we got to figure out later on, we can't, the, the window is as high up as it can go. We can't go any higher up. So this is the fixed location for the window. So that inch and a half that we need for the floor, because it's going to have the foam and a piece of plywood. So it's an inch and a half. It's gonna to have to come from the frame thickness or the uh, mountain bike area. So we'll, uh, we'll tackle that when we get there, but I just wanted to show you where you need to consider putting your window. Don't just instantly cut your window out and then maybe have it right here because <laughs> your mattress will cover it. Um, you know, you won't have the garage space that you need. So those are things to think about. So now that you know your fixed height for your window, this is as high as up, up as it can go, you now understand where your mattress you're sleeping on is going to land, which will be right here. Now, if we really need that space for our bikes in the bottom, we can have our six inch mattress kind of an inch and a half up around here. Um, it's not ideal, but again, a van is fixed. You have these fixed spaces and it's really hard to, it's a, it's a give and take on this. Uh, you could go with a four inch mattress, but most people are gonna wanna do a six. <laughs> um, so we'll figure out that later, because this is something we can't change. The window has to be here. It's as high as up it can go. It's enough room for our lip. I think you guys get the point. So the next is let's reverse engineer this and found, find out how we got our window location where it's at. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just step by step take apart this frame. So right here, as you guys can see, this is the inner foam spacer. So rigid foam. This is what we're going to upholster. Here's our frame that we use to make sure we have enough uh, spacing. So we're going to come here and take this off. And you see this wood frame on the outside will actually, will, it just, it'll actually look like this. So imagine this being glued together, upholstered inside and out, and then this being a whole cube. I mean, not a cube, but a whole unit. And then this is going to, once the window is in, this is going to straddle the frame like that. And the, the wood panel is going to come on here. We'll trace it from the inside, cut it out. And when all the panels are upholstered and ready to go, we'll put this in. And then we'll just screw into this piece of wood and this will all be attached to the wood panel. So it'll all become one piece. 
Now, make sure you consider the frame. So don't just consider the foam tr trim ring. You gotta think of the metal compression ring for the window. So this is CRL, CRL AW1033 window frame. So what I did is I made sure that the foam can fit in over the frame, everything fits. And then for the frame here, this, I just taped together and I put it over our template. Just to make sure I knew how everything worked since I haven't used that foam before. I wanted to make sure I understood how everything fits together. So we're just like taking, we're just taking this sandwich apart. So this part lets us know where this is gonna be. And since this is where we want it to be and we're happy with the way this got put in, uh, also let me show you a couple things. This center line is the center line of our window. It's, just, it's matched up with our center dot of this frame. We're in the center of this rib. So we have three ribs here. This is the wider one. This is a Ford Transit 148 inch wheelbase. So this wider one, we are marking the center and we've got the center line and then these two pieces of tape, I measured 16 and a half here, 16 and a half here. This black middle space is the center. So I just line that up center and as long as it comes over my template, nice and even, okay, I'm happy with that. Um, if you watch our other video, the other Ford Transit we worked on, this window is in a different location. The reason it's in a different location is because we have a ladder on the outside of the van and it would look very strange if the ladder rail was covering this part of the window and not over here. It, it would just look weird. So this one is a more typical inst install. That one about the back window back there is, I had to move it so that it would visually look accurate. All right, it would look, it would look not weird. So now this is our uh, final template. This is what we're gonna cut out. The outer ring is the foam trim ring. So what I did is, now notice how I keep turning this up backwards, is because I want this hard edge to trace to up here. So to get this outer line to be used to center this cardboard, what I did is I put this up here before I put this template piece of carpet on here. I took my spacer, just a piece of aluminum, I put it up here, so this aluminum is very rigid. It's almost like a ruler. So this is gonna come up here, mount flush, nice and flush. So make sure when you clean this up, so see this line? Make sure when you clean this line up, you also sand it to get all the burrs and all the glue and the foam adhesive off. Because you want to make sure when this goes up here, it's as flat as can be. Then just lay it on top of here. And we're gonna click, just push it up there. And we wanna push this up and hold it in place. This, uh, this I'm not moving this template, I ever have it set, but this wouldn't be here when you're doing this step. You would have this outer ring, you would trace it to know that this is where this foam has to be. I can't change it. So once you're happy with how you traced it, that next step is gonna be you coming in with the foam template that we showed you how to make in a separate video and centering it and making sure up, down, left, right, that it's nice and centered. What I did is, it's not the pieces that I cut out right here, these three and grinded, these two right here, I'll put a mark. So this point, and this point have not been disturbed by me. They haven't been grinded on. So those are my reference points. And so what I do is I get this close to where I think it's gonna be. I tape it off and then I'm gonna take my measurement and I have an inch and three eighths. And I come over here, I've got an inch and three eighths. So I know that this is gonna be even uh, in my van. And then all I do is just do a final measurement over here. Let's see, we got a quarter of an inch. And come over here, we got a quarter of an inch. 
So I know I'm good left and right level and left to right even. Um, now this may sound odd, but if your top two marks are nice and even to your template, understanding that it's straight, and then your left to right is good, this down here at the bottom, there's really, you know, nothing that you can really change on this uh, because this is going to have to do with how good you cut your template out, how straight you were when you cut this out. Um, so if this line is even and this line is crooked, uh, this is the most important, just in my experience. You don't want the window to be slightly crooked. Um, so this top line is important because there's a body line that goes up here. And just visually, when people see your van, or when you see your van, the top line is going to be the reference to this. And you're going to look at it and be like, that's nice and even. But if you didn't get this and this even, then it's going to be, it's going to look weird. So we really just don't want things to look weird. That's, that's our, our goal. All right. So this is where it's going to be. It's going to be cut out here in just a second. So you may ask, Nick, how do I transfer this to the other side? Because you're not going to cut from this side. You're going to cut from the other side. You're actually going to take this template and move it to the other side. So you're going to do two things. So I've probably taped over it and you probably can't see it, um, but there's going to be two holes drilled in here. And what we're going to do is they can be here, here, here. You just need two holes opposite of each other. And we're going to take a drill bit, small drill bit, an eighth inch drill bit, eighth inch is okay. Uh, actually, maybe like a sixteenth, something in between there. I like the diameter of this, this marker, for example. And you're going to drill a hole through here. Don't move the template. You're going to drill a hole here. And don't move it. And then you're going to take two of those drill bits. You need two. And you're going to put them in through these holes. And then once those holes are drilled, you know, you'll take those drill bits out and what you're going to do is you're going to take this and then we're going to transfer it to the other side. We're going to take those two drill bits. We're going to put them back through the holes and just like a puzzle piece, we're going to take this from the inside of the van, same orientation. And then on the outside of the van, we're going to find those two holes that we drilled. And we're going to slide that template over them. That's how we mirror this to the other side. So these two holes coming through here will be like two uh, like dowel pins almost. Then our template's gonna slide over them. Then we're gonna trace where that landed. We'll mask off the outside for our jigsaw and then we'll cut it. So that is the whole entire process. Um, I'm gonna keep this video short. We will, will be another part uh, I may end with a time lapse of me cutting the hole out, um, but I wanted to keep this nice and short because this is probably the most important, uh, most stressful part of doing a DIY van conversion is just being confident that you have this laid out so that your end result is what you want it to look like. Yeah. So I hope that helped. If you have any questions, make sure you guys put those in the comments. Uh, comment section of this video. I'll be happy to answer them in a future video or a live stream. We'll probably hop on and talk about a live stream. And throughout this whole entire process, there's a lot of tools I use. There's a lot of parts that I use. And I want to talk to you guys about the DIY van build cheat sheet. So this cheat sheet is essentially an Excel sheet that I put together over the last three years of all of my Amazon purchases for the shop. So anything I bought off of Amazon, it's on that list. The best part is this list is completely free. So all you gotta do is click on the link uh, put your name, email address, it's going to come straight to your inbox. It's completely free. There's only two, there's over 250 curated items on this list, um, specifically for van builds and items like that. There's solar components, there's electrical components, um, there's, you know, the max fan ventilation, there's water pumps. Uh, the most important part of this list is the tools. So there's a tool section and 
it is awesome. So it's all these tools that I use to do the van conversions. They're mainly specialty tools like wire strippers, PEX A crimpers, the riv rivet plus nut, riv nut. It's a hydraulic riv nut drill adapter. It's a big name, but something like that is hard to find. So on this list, you can find that. So check it out. It's a DIY van build cheat sheet. It's completely free. I really think it's going to help you out on your next DIY van build. Also, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Like it if you enjoyed this video and then share it if somebody is putting in a window like this and they may need some help. So until next time, I will see you guys in the next video.